Hello and welcome to DXB Today, where this evening we are celebrating everything UAE Union Day. But what have we specifically got coming up on the show? Our very own Khalid went down to Sheikh Mohammed Center for cultural understanding. Ash also went to check out the World Green Energy Summit. Plus, we've got an award-winning artist right here in the studio with us. So we've got so many things happening coming up. We've got Union Day and we've got COP28. So what do you guys think about all of that? What are you guys going to do over the weekend? I mean, I'm so excited about the fact that Expo City is going to be the place for, to be over the next couple of weeks. I mean, uh, I think a lot of us spent quite a bit of time there. There was a lot of walking yes. around and I can't wait to walk those streets again. And just to see people, COP28 being celebrated, UAE National Day as well. I think it's definitely the perfect place for it because, you know, it is one of the biggest achievements of the UAE. Definitely. I mean, just for me personally, like being here for so long, having the UAE as my home, I just love celebrating Union Day as it is now yes. and I just love doing like the most simple of things I love taking a walk down Kite Beach yeah. along Jumeirah seeing all the flags that are set out there for me just doing, really embracing the wonderful it's life that we view. have here is what you know Union Day is all about yes. you know celebrating this epic country and especially that it's being held at COP as well. Yes. So in Expo City, everyone's going to be there. We have all the delegations coming from all around the world. Everyone's going to be at Expo. It's open again. The weather is great. So guys, go down there and enjoy it. There's a lot to talk about at COP as well. Well, there's a lot to talk about about the show today, but we have to introduce our guest co-host. But who is our guest co-host today? Hi, I'm Dr. Leila Harab Lumheri, and I can't wait to see you guys in the studio. Dr. Leila will join us right here in just a second. But our very own Khalid went down to the Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Center for Cultural Understanding, the ultimate guide to the city's traditions to take a deeper dive into the Emirati culture with a special cultural lunch. Take a look. Today we are at Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum Center for Culture and Understanding where we are going to sit down for a traditional Emirati lunch. Come follow me. I'm here today with Ahmed who is going to teach us everything we need to know about Emirati culture and he's going to tell us everything that the center does. Ahmed, it's a pleasure being with you here today. What do we need to know about the culture? Well, this is the best place to come and visit if you come to Dubai or you are outside and you come into the UAE. This is the best. This is the oldest place in Dubai. It's the Al-Fahedi. We have about 55 houses. These, this village used to be the millionaire of Dubai. This was the hub of the business. The boats would take out from here to India to bring the barley, the rice, everything to Dubai, to go to Iran, to go to South Africa, to go to Sri Lanka for the spice. That was their job, the people who lived here. We have people being in Dubai for 20 years. They never knew about this place. And when they'd find it, they brought their families and friends. You know, these beautiful houses, they made only of coral and mud or, or clay and wood. That's it, there's no steel in these columns. If you chip through these columns, you will only find wood. This is the wood. This is called the chandel wood found in Africa. So the ships will actually go and bring them. They use them to support these houses. The questions I get is what kind of food you eat? What kind of clothes you eat? Why the woman wears black? Why the man wears white? And these are very interesting questions for them to know. And we, we basically answer their questions and, and we're ready for any question. We, we, have no, we have an open door and open mind policy, which means you can ask any questions. Yeah. Well, I know most of the time a lot of people ask me about the Emirati culture and I try to explain to them. Can you tell us as well more regarding the center itself as like a lot of people will come and learn about the center and about the culture, but is there anything in particular that, that you like to focus on? Basically, the center here has been about for 25 years now. And the center is welcoming and, and, and bringing people in from overseas or from the country who comes and want to know more about the culture. I think is the best, which we have come across a lot. The schools, when the teachers come, they bring them here. When, they, when hotels open or hospitals, they bring the stuff here to learn. You need to learn about the culture of this country to know the do's and the don'ts. And this is the best place. So also we, we serve food the UAE food, the local food. 
that you won't find it in any restaurants. You'll find it here. The machbous, the biryani, the bread, uh, the lugaymat, all type of food you find here. So we serve breakfast, we have lunch, we serve also dinner. Uh, and at the moment we're going to serve lunch, I have a big group there, and let's go and have a look. Well, I'm excited. I can't wait to taste it myself. If you would like to understand Emirati culture, come and see how Emiratis used to live traditionally yourself. If you're new or visiting to the UAE, come on down to Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Center for Culture and Understanding. Khalid going back to his roots there. Thanks for that, buddy. Now, today's co-host is an Emirati serial entrepreneur and legend, transforming the worlds of aviation, cybersecurity, and even holistic healthcare in the region. A multipreneur and global leader, and even founded her company in order to help with the development of the UAE. Please join me in welcoming the CEO of a live group, Dr. Leila Al Muheri. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be back again. We're so happy to have you here, and so many different industries that you're involved yes, in. Yes, yes. I'm everywhere. Oh, and I'm going to ask you a difficult <laughs> question to start off. Yes. Which one are you most interested in right now? Right now in the medical field. And why is that? What, where, how do you go from cybersecurity, aviation, and then into holistic medicine? Well, let me tell you, I, I, I am from aviation and transportation. And aviation and transportation, there's a big side of it, which is about the human, human aspect and human capability. And that touches the medical field a lot. So I came from fatigue management from aviation, and that is a smooth transition into the medical field, especially the field that I'm in right now. Um, Abdul Aziz, the last time you were here, we spoke about the holistic therapy. And of course, you went from a rehabilitation center, and now it's a clinic, a medical clinic. So can you please tell us more about that? Yes, we are a polyclinic and rehabilitation center yes. in Merdeh. And it's and growing we as well. It's growing and we are expanding. So we started with physiotherapy and holistic therapy. Yeah. Now we are moving into internal medicine and rheumatology uh, services as well. But we are you know, still uh, true to our uh, concept, which is a, a holistic approach yeah. and preventive medicine rather than reactive. Yeah. Uh, so Dr. Leila, we were speaking prior to uh, you jumping on the yes. sofa with us and I want to just talk a little bit about aviation yes. and in particular sustainability within the aviation realm. So yes. obviously Dubai is a hub and lots of people are travelling in yes. and out and recently I saw that there's now flights that are using cooking oil yes, as a form of fuel. Yes, I read an article guys, <laughs> wow. believe it or not. <laughs> So can you explain to me a little bit about how aircrafts are using cooking oil as yes. a form of fuel and is that going to make the aviation industry more sustainable yes. in the long run? Yes, especially now your question is very relevant because we have the COP meetings right now, yes. it's happening and uh, all environmental leaders around the world are here in the, in the UAE. So uh, the biofuel, which we are talking about, the cooking oil, actually started way before when uh, the whole global community looked at aviation and they said we need a lot of aviation, a lot of initiatives in order to decrease the, uh, the carbon footprint of aviation. Although aviation is way better than the shipping and we have a captain uh, after this, uh, yeah. you know, uh, in the shipping industry where their footprint is much higher than aviation. But aviation, uh, aviation community came together. They put a lot of uh, initiatives and they really wanted to push the agenda of uh, shifting the fuel to alternative fuel yeah. and to biofuel. Uh, they are calling it SAF, so Sustainable Aviation Fuel. And this is the, bio, the biofuel and the cooking oil that uh, was on, used in the Dreamliner of Virgin. It is using cooking oil. But in the future, from my own perspective, I think uh, the aircraft and aviation, even even the normal, uh, you know, automobile industry and the shipping industry, we are all going to a more cleaner uh, oil, uh, sorry, cleaner en energy, which is the hydrogen. I think the hydrogen is uh, the future for uh, transportation because you are not using something which has already a, a carbon footprint because you are, you know, the oil, the, bar, the cooking oil already has during the manufacturing a carbon uh, footprint in, uh, globally. 
So uh, that's the future. Hydrogen is the future. But we are going to take a stage by stage. And the first stage is the SAF, Sustainable Aviation Fuel. Well, obviously, yes. Dr. Leila, you are a guru in the field of transportation, so you must have done some amazing <laughs> work with RTA. Can you tell us a little bit about some of those projects? Yes, RTA, uh, actually, I started my journey with the transportation with RTA. So I was with the DIWA, uh, DIWA Dubai Electricity and Water Authority, and they uh, established RTA back in 2005, and I started my journey within a small team with uh, His Excellency Matar al and the other group of uh, the team. We established the Roads and Transport Authority. Why? Because we wanted a more, again, holistic uh, look at the transportation. We wanted all means of transportation to be connected mm -hmm. in order to provide a seamless uh, travel experience for all commuters and passengers in Dubai. Can you tell us how excited we should be about the new metro line? How, how soon can we expect it? Where are we expecting it to go? Uh, well, I cannot talk ab talk on behalf of RTA. Yeah. I'm now, uh, you know, in the private you field and in the medical. <laughs> but yes, I mean, uh, there are lines, even in, back in 2005, the master uh, plan for uh, the metro is not something that you see right now. It's way bigger, way uh, more uh, connected, and more lines. We had the purple line, and you yes, know. Yes, I have the blue one coming yes. up. <laughs> so it's, uh, I mean, the lines are coming, but yes. uh, these are huge infrastructure uh, projects, and it takes time, and it requires a lot of uh, capital, and you need to make sure that everything you bring in and in the infrastructure is connected properly with the public transportation, with other means of transportation, so we don't want a line putting a line in uh, in the infrastructure without having the feeders and without having uh, you know to provide a seamless uh, passenger and they need they need you know a transportation to reach to that line yes. you know what i mean yeah, yeah. so m when i mean that is something for rta <laughs> I to would ask. Definitely ask them yeah, yeah. Um, abdul aziz also your cv is filled with everything from like we said aviation cybersecurity yes. and healthcare yes. can you talk to us about the shift that you had from the government job to the private one that you've Yes, right I now. thought it would be easy. Yeah. You know, 30 years in the government, I thought, you know, my network, my understanding, but totally, it's a total different shift in, uh, you know, when you are, yourself is funding uh, your projects. But it's very exciting because, you know, the thing that I was uh, not struggling with, but, you know, having that kind of passion that I had a vision okay working in the government you need to be aligned with the with the country vision for yes. sure even in the private sector we are aligned with the with the country with our government uh, vision but still you are you are a piece yeah. but when you are in the uh, private uh, sector you have so much freedom although you have a lot of challenges mm -hmm. financial challenges uh, regulation challenges etc but you are your own uh, you know uh, you know you have your own ship you are the driver yes. and you can be in control 100% of uh, what you are trying to do what you are trying to achieve so that's exactly what I felt as a big, uh, big plus in the private field that I can myself achieve what I want to do. Yeah. Incredible. You know? Well, I know we're going to have you on the show for a little bit longer so yes. we can ask you so many more questions and get your opinions on some of the great topics that we are going to be discussing on the show. But coming up, the first Emirati female ship captain shares her stories in the studio. We're also going to get an insight into how to integrate renewable energy with Ash from the World Green Energy Summit. Plus, a very special crooner is going to sing for us tonight. So don't go anywhere. <laughs> 